It's a difficult one to know how to be feeling right now, isn't it? Yes, guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel Chelsea news. Deadline day is over. It feels as though it should be today, doesn't it? Because Chelsea have ended the transfer window without signing a recognised number nine. We're going to finish today's video with that, so stay tuned till the end to hear my very honest and somewhat brutal thoughts on Chelsea not signing Victor Osimhen, but today... We've got to get excited about Jadon Sancho. We don't have to get excited. You guys don't have to get excited, but I'm excited about it. We're then going to talk about Sterling to Arsenal. We're going to talk Chalaba going to Crystal Palace. We're going to talk Armando Breuer to Everton. And then, of course, finish with Osimhen. But before I do get into anything, I want to say a massive thank you to all of you that tuned in, whether it was for the entire 13 and a half hours or if you just tuned in for like five minutes, one minute, ten minutes, for all of the donations that came in on the live streams, the super chats were on fire. Thank you for all of the support on the stream yesterday. I thought I had to do deadline day justice for you lot because we went to America, we did the preseason tour. I feel as though I've gone in with Chelsea content this summer. I feel as though I'm more connected right now to you guys in terms of what I'm trying to do here, which is provide, like, obviously my opinions, but also the most rounded, I guess, documentation of what's going on at Chelsea that I can possibly do. And the channel's growing. I'm delighted with it. So thank you for all the love and support. If you're still not subscribed, make sure you do so, because today we have got a lot of stuff to go through. We've also got Crystal Palace in the Premier League tomorrow. Jaden Sancho is a Chelsea player. And I feel as though this might be three or four years too late. And I think that a lot of people's opinions on this one will be clouded by what has happened to him at Manchester United. To be fair, in the build-up to this transfer even happening, I don't think I allowed myself to get as excited as I now am because I was worried that we were just going to be taking a player here with taking a massive risk. The moment that I've seen that this is absolutely Joe Shield saying, get Jaden Sancho, this is a good deal, then I start to feel a lot more comfortable with it. This is a big one. And this is the current update from David Ornstein regarding this deal. So, Chelsea complete the signing of Jaden Sancho from Manchester United. 24-year-old winger leaves Man United on season-long loan with obligation to buy at 20 to 25 million, depending on performance milestones. CFC to deploy England international primarily on the left flank. So since then, we've heard this tweet. We have heard that it's actually going to be if Chelsea finish 14th place in the Premier League or higher, which we should do, shouldn't we? Bloody well hope so. Then we have to buy Sancho. I think this is one of those deals that as much as people might look at what's happened to Sancho at Manchester United, I think with some footballers, they just need to be in an environment where they feel comfortable and they feel loved. If you look at Sancho... When he first joined Man United, there was Cristiano Ronaldo there, Paul Pogba was still there. And I think Sancho is a superstar player who went to Man United thinking he was going to be their superstar and he never really was their superstar. Then Eric Ten Hag came in and it just didn't work. Eric Ten Hag and Jadon Sancho clashed. They didn't like him. And I think he comes to an environment now where Jadon Sancho is a Chelsea fan. I don't think this is as important anymore in football as it maybe once was. Cole Palmer's a Man United fan, but it doesn't mean that I think he's going to go to Man United. Maybe he does one day. Fingers crossed he doesn't. Sancho coming to London, he's a London boy. He was a Chelsea fan when Chelsea won the Champions League. He was putting it on social media how happy he was. And I think sometimes a player who has not quite fulfilled their potential, it's the easiest thing to do is just to be like, well, Man United wasted a load of money on him. And if you're a Man United fan, you probably care about this deal a lot because you look at Sancho and even Manchester United fans know that they've not bought a bad player. I do think there is an element of Bundesliga, transition to the Premier League. We've seen it ourselves with Kai Havertz. It didn't really work at Chelsea. Timo Werner didn't really work at Chelsea either. Havertz has gone on to do well at Arsenal. And I feel like this is the same thing. I think what Chelsea have seen with Havertz, where he's gone to Arsenal and become a big part of a team... It's going to be the same here for Sancho. And it's also kind of the same for Sterling. Not wanted by Maresca, Not wanted at Chelsea, but watch him do well at Arsenal. Some players just need a different environment. Some players fit different environments better than others. And I think this Sancho deal was always supposed to happen. I wanted him at Chelsea in 2020. During COVID time, I was desperate for Chelsea to sign him. 
And I've just got a feeling that it's going to work. And I think it's one of those deals where right now we're upset that we've not got Osimhen. I personally think Chelsea needed a number nine. We'll talk about that later. But I'm delighted with this deal for Jadon Sancho and the fact that he's going to be primarily deployed on the left flank. I pretty much gave up with Mudrik after the Savet game. As much as I would obviously support him when he's in a Chelsea shirt, I think I concluded from that match that Mudrik isn't at the level that Chelsea need. And I'm happy that we have looked at the opportunity in the market to sign a potential bargain here in Sancho. It's a season-long loan, 20 to 25 million. I think this is going to go down as incredible Chelsea business. I think United will end up fuming with this one. I've seen a few fans of theirs not happy with this. But I think this is great. I think Sancho will be competing with Pedro Neto on that left-hand side. I think there's also going to be Pedro Neto can play on the right. He'll be competing, competing, sorry, with Nani Madweki. We've not had much sleep in the last couple of days. But this is great news. We maybe didn't need another winger. We didn't see Mudrik go out on loan. But Sterling is gone. So I think this actually, Chelsea is stacked out wide. But I think it's an important position for us. And we can see versatility Across the field, Sancho can also play on the right. So, Sancho to Chelsea. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments down below. The next piece of news here is about Raheem Sterling. We knew that we were looking for a solution. And I'm not going to sit here and say to you that I'm annoyed that he's gone to Arsenal. But I will say this. I think he does really well there. They've done an announcement video. And it's, he's saying that they're going to see the best of him. I think again at Chelsea... He's been at Manchester City, been at Liverpool. He exploded at Liverpool, signed for Man City, played under Guardiola, won a load of titles, scored a load of goals in a ridiculously good side. Comes to Chelsea, never hit the heights because, well, Chelsea have been in transition. He came to Chelsea and had the opportunity to be a leader and I don't think he's ever grasped that role with a very young squad. So, completed Sterling deal from Chelsea to Arsenal is one season loan, no option or obligation Sterling would have preferred a permanent move, but happy to go on loan to work with Mikel Arteta again, play for Arsenal and keep his family in London. I think this is the best outcome that Sterling could have looked for. I think with the way that he was trying to solve contract issues at Chelsea, there's a lot of money that Sterling would have been owed by Chelsea. He's still got three years left on his deal. It's over 300 grand a week. He was the highest paid player remaining at the club. We're going to look at this and think, well, maybe we've handed Arsenal a player that's going to help them win the Premier League. That could be the case, but realistically, Chelsea aren't going to be competing for the Premier League this season. And I think a big reason for that is what we're going to explain at the end of this video. But let's now move and discuss here the story about Trevo Chalobah. Exclusive Crystal Palace reach agreement with Chelsea to sign Chalobah. Deal for versatile 25-year-old defender, straight season long loan. No option or obligation to buy next summer. Transfer includes loan fee from Crystal Palace to Chelsea. This is where I kind of lose my patience a little bit here because I said this a hundred times on my live stream and I think virtually everybody agrees with me in the comments. Chelsea Football Club have made a massive mistake here by keeping Baddy Ashil and Axel de Sassi at the club and just simply letting Trevo Chalaba go to another London club straight on, away on loan. For me, this is a massive error with the talent identification that is happening at Chelsea right now. I don't know what anyone else can see that is happening with de Sassi and Baddy Ashil apart from like in terms of the way that they could be, the way that they are, how they defend, what they do, how they benefit the Chelsea team. I don't think anyone at Chelsea can sit there and argue with me or you and tell us that those two defenders are better than Chalaba. And the fact that we have let him just go on a straight loan. I, I Sometimes I look at these comments that we've heard in recent weeks from Maresca and I'm like, can he actually sit there and say that he doesn't think Chalaba's part of his plans? Surely this is a Chelsea Football Club thing. And because of the wages that Chalaba's been on, because he signed a new deal quite recently, Chelsea couldn't get rid of him. We couldn't find a permanent suitor for Chalaba because the wages are too high. And if Chelsea are being like, nah, we're, we're not even going to take you on a pre-season tour, then how can Chelsea Football Club expect to get an important fee for Chalaba? We've got to understand here that the way that we are being ridiculed in the public, as much as a lot of it is very much exaggerated and a lot of it is agenda-driven because people don't really look at the facts. Maresca's not been working with as big of a squad as people like to make it out to be. 
because there's been a clear separation between who's part of the plan, who's not. Chelsea have a lot of players on their books, yes. We've done a bad job of getting rid of them at the end here. But I think more importantly than saying, oh, well, look, we've got Ben Chilwell still at the club. What are we going to do with him? Yes, this is a problem. This is a big problem. But also just sending players that we couldn't get rid of who we too early shunned and banished from Chelsea. We've only got ourselves to blame here. I think this is a poor judgment of quality. And I think Chalaber is better than some of the defenders that we are going to see play for Chelsea this season. Crystal Palace managed to keep hold of Mark Gurhey. They've got Oliver Glasner as their manager. They come to Stamford Bridge tomorrow. Stay tuned later on on the channel for the second video of the day where we're going to be doing a preview for this game. But I think Chelsea have got this one completely wrong. We move now to discuss Armando Breuer who has moved to Everton on loan. We heard earlier in the transfer window that Breuer would be going to Everton. Potentially, they've got the deal done on deadline day, having monitored Armando's journey for a number of years. We're very pleased to have been able to bring him to the club. Breuer goes to Everton. There is no option or obligation to buy. And as well as that, Chelsea have still got to pay his wages until the man is fit again. So I feel as though at the end of this transfer window... We have rushed so many things, be it trying to wait until the deadline to sign Osimhen and completely misjudging and underestimating what that deal was going to entail. entail. And we've also underestimated here the amount of players that we had to get rid of and the lack of work that we've done to do it. But also something that I have been saying all along, if Chelsea Football Club are going to be finishing in mid-table, playing in the Conference League, our players aren't worth as much as we might think they are. This is the harsh truth that we need to understand as fans. But more importantly, this is what the club need to understand, okay? If we're going to put in mediocre seasons and finish in mediocre positions in the table, people look at Chelsea and think, what have they done? They've fallen off. They're not the team that they once were. The players that we think are worth 30 million quid are massively risky. Ipswich... He couldn't pass a medical, Armando Breuer. Everton, they're not going to put a 30 million obligation in there, knowing damn well that Armando Breuer's growth has stunted ever since he left Southampton on a loan two years ago. It's absolutely crazy. Now, Victor Rossiman, we've got to talk about this here. And all of these things are connected, right? Because there's a lot to unpack with this Osserman deal. First things first, I think it's absolutely mental that Victor Rossiman wasn't bought in this transfer window. But I also think that maybe, as much as I really wanted Osimhen at Chelsea, look at the fact that Paris Saint-Germain were interested, but then at the beginning of August, they pulled out of this deal. There wasn't any other club in Europe that wanted to sign Osimhen this summer. They knew that the wages were ridiculous. They know that his agent is flipping mad and he's airing all of his laundry in public every five minutes to try and get Osimhen as much money as possible. Napoli are very difficult to deal with. They took Lukaku from us, were insistent that it was a separate deal. And in the end, I'm not really sure whose pants have been pulled down here, but I think pretty much if we were to explain it, everyone's had their pants pulled down and we're all in pain right now. Let's be honest, not maybe me or maybe you, but Chelsea don't get their striker. Osimhen doesn't get his move. He's sat on the bench with the under-21s training or never playing for Napoli again. And Napoli have still got themselves a very expensive burden in the dressing room now. And as much as I think in the next couple of days we're going to see Osimhen sign for a Saudi Arabian club, someone will find a way to get this done. There's no way, in my opinion, that Osimhen actually stays at Napoli this season. But the issue here with Chelsea is that we needed him. We needed to sign a recognised striker. As much as we can look at the Sancho signing and be like, yeah, this could be exciting. We can look at Pedro Neto and be like, yep, this is going to be good. Vega looks like a bargain. Chelsea's transfer window, we've spent £280 million and we still don't have a world-class goalkeeper. We still don't have a top-class leader at the back and we still don't have a proper number nine that we can rely on to get us Champions League football and competing for trophies again. That is the reality and the harsh truth of what has happened here. And when it comes to Osimhen, Chelsea didn't want to budge from their wage structure. We've got a new structure at the club, but here is the harsh truths that I mentioned at the start of the video that need to be brought up and addressed here. The reason we can't pay Osimhen what Osimhen wants 
is because when Clear Lake first took over at Chelsea, they had a transfer window where they threw ridiculous money at players like Raheem Sterling, who's never quite fit in. Khalidu Koulibaly, what the bloody hell happened to him? Marco Corella, now he's coming good. But Chelsea, when we first signed these new owners, when we first signed these new owners, when we got the new owners and Abramovich was forced to sell the club, mistakes were made. We spent a lot of money on unnecessary players, paying them so much money that we've got to a point where we are literally been hanging on by a thread to not break the rules and get ourselves massive fines, point deductions and transfer bans. That is the truth. We've had to sell hotels to our sister club. We're having to try and sell players like David Washington to our sister club. Chelsea, let's be honest, we have been very erratic. We have signed a lot of players that we're a bit like, why? What have we done here? We've signed a lot of exciting ones. And this isn't me just digging a hole here and saying I don't like the owners, they're rubbish. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is, Victor Osimhen could have been the difference between guaranteed or almost guaranteed top four football, £120 million extra in revenue, and not. And I think the reality of the situation is here, we are putting so much onus and emphasis on believing in Nicholas Jackson, who missed so many chances, even on th Thursday night, on Joao Felix, who's never been an outright striker, and Mark Guillou who, let's be fair, as much as I like the guy, he is not a Champions League level striker, maybe not even a Europa League level striker yet, or Conference League. So, Victor Osimhen wanted to come to Chelsea, but he got greedy in the end. That's the truth. We couldn't find an amount that was right for him. And in the end, he stays at Napoli or he goes to Saudi Arabia. But the truth is here with Chelsea, that because of the mistakes that the new owners have made when they first came in, we are now going to be suffering... As a result, because I, I respect that we're sticking to the wage structure, I do. Sometimes those, those things are there to be broken when the player is of that kind of quality. But in terms of the sporting directors, this is on them. They've completely underestimated here that all summer long, a loan was never going to cut it. Osman doesn't want to go on loan. He's a top player. Napoli, very difficult to negotiate with. We know that. Victor Osman, he's quite greedy. He wants a lot of money. We also knew that. So it's not a surprise whatsoever that we've fallen short here. What is a surprise is that we didn't have anything to back it up. We didn't go for Ivan Tony properly. That was never really concrete. We had rumours about players like Calvert-Lewin. Like, that was always a bad idea. But there are other strikers on the market, top goal scorers. Victor Giorquez, another example, another player. But instead, we have gone and spent too much again on players that might never play for Chelsea again and the players for the future. We spent 280 million in this window and the only players I could be like, yeah, I think we've improved with is Renato Vega, Joao Felix, Pedro Neto, Jadon Sancho. Other than that, it's all for the future again, but we still miss out on the goal scorer that would have taken us to the next level. And if we don't get top four now, that's why. That is why. And it's, it's yes, we could have also bought better centre-backs, but we've just sent the best one that we've got at the club on loan and kept two players from that we've spent 70-odd million on from Monaco that aren't very good. So as much as I'll sit here and I'll say, I start to understand what the club are doing now, I get that we don't want to break the wage structure. I think in the long run, it's a good thing. We will suffer because of the mistakes that were made before. And Osimhen is going to sit there warming up the bench at, in Naples, listening to Antonio Conte giving the hairdryer treatment to his average squad, week in, week out, and he could have been here at Chelsea. He didn't want to lower his wages, but some of the numbers that I'm hearing, I don't fully believe that some of these salaries that we're, we reportedly offered Osimhen are true. But like, we were so far off the mark. How did we not see this coming? How? Another good sign in this summer has been Esteval. I think Esteval is going to come to Chelsea next year and absolutely tear the world up, set the world on fire. But it's another winger. Another winger. So I think this season's going to be interesting now. I think we're going to have to really back Nicholas Jackson here as much as it's easy to be like, oh, we've got to stick with Nicholas Jackson. He's a good player. He's a really good player. Osimhen was just going to be that next level that I think would have made us very, very competitive on every single front. But we didn't get him. Also, the goalkeeping situation. What's going to happen there? We've got Sanchez and Jorgensen. Please be good. Please. 
Fafana, stay fit. Cole will stay fit because if you don't, bloody hell, are we screwed at the back? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Thank you for all the love and support. Again, make sure if you're buying yourself the Chelsea kit this season, if you want Sancho on the back, 10% off is the code. GBFC10 is the code for 10% off. Link is in the description. See you guys in a bit.